It is a great honor for me to participate to CHS Fellows Research Talks as after, after some years of itinerant academia, my journey comes full circle back to the CHS where my project first uh, found space to grow. Thanks to the amazing people who in these years have supported me in so many ways. Uh, my deep gratitude goes to, of course, Greg, wonderful Zoe, Lana, who has been totally following all my steps and Lenny, my CHS supervisor, who is coordinating the amazing IT team, uh, Noel, Ellie, and Luke, realizing the digital presence of this project. I would also like to welcome my colleague Francesco Camilla and also my supervisor, Italian supervisor, Roberto Nicolai, uh, should be online, I don't know, maybe he will join us. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Professor. Hi. Good evening. And out of his support and precious mentoring, this project first arose. Thank you all. I feel very privileged to have CHS and Sapienza by my side in this Marie Curie endeavor. So the plan today is that I am going to start with a big picture, a more theoretical approach to what I am doing. And then we are going to sketch a very general overview on the artistic panorama of the Aegean area in the Hellenistic period, focusing on two cornerstones of the performative arts in different ways, so Crete and Delos. Then I am going to do a very Granular, granular deep dive into an inscription I selected that, that joins together these two islands. I look forward for everyone's comments and questions after my presentation, of course. So um, let's, let, let's start, let's get started. Um, various reasons can inspire a travel. Traveling for art implies embracing new challenges, being prone to staying in the limelight and taking risks, chasing glory, rewards, and money. Throughout the Hellenistic period and beyond itinerant professionals of literature and music traveled around Greece for all the above. The endeavors, past stories of the poeti vaganti, so-called by Margherita Guarducci for the first time, um, are uh, attested, mainly attested by the uh, inscriptions, by epigraphy, allowing, allowing us to envision a cultural and popular phenomenon that run parallel the, to the court literature. Inscriptions a plethora of them actually consisting of uh, proxy, honorary decrees, um, statue bases, uh, dedications, uh, uh, epigrams, uh, celebratory and funerary ones, testify to an impressive turnout of artists in the main cultural centers of the Hellenism, which were prestigious displays for the artistic eater of performers. These documents, uh, sometimes validated by literary sources, attest to an itinerant movement of uh, various kinds of virtuosi. Uh, trained artists, enfants prodiges, women, teachers at various levels of education, um, professionals of the avant-garde or uh, of the tradition, showing off their art uh, and professionalism in front of an audience gathered for the occasion and enjoying the honors and privileges granted by the host city in approval of their performance. Let me share my PowerPoint now so that we can go into the thick of the discourse. Okay. The sources, C can you see the PowerPoint, right? We can see it and okay. that's in presentation mode. That's perfect. Okay. okay, thank you. These sources offering us valuable information narrate a movement on the move whose nature is well suggested by the poetic expression Tanois Posin, which I found um, uh, perfect for this project because it 
captures, it grasps the essence of the art on the move. Uh, Tanois Posin was an expression used many, maybe for other reasons, but uh, uh, it was used for uh, the Herald Foristas of Tanagra, and it means with winged feet. So the winged feet artists transmitted culture trends professionalism all over the Hellenistic Greece. And epigraphy offers us the chance to reshape our idea of the Hellenistic culture as we are used to interpret it, casting light on essential aspects we otherwise would not acknowledge. Through inscriptions, we are allowed to explore performances and travels of the Hellenistic professionals of the art and to investigate this movement in, in, in its impact on history, culture, and society of the Hellenism. The poetic Vaganti phenomenon had a significant impact on the performative and cultural life of the Hellenistic centers, but um, it increased even more in the imperial era. In fact, while the imperial development was investigated at great length, on the Hellenistic phase, we have we can benefit from studies on partial aspects uh, um, based on uh, um, some categories of professionals or um, some uh, special um, figure or special role. Um, when I started this, this research, I started it as a sample investigation of the most documented areas. And it was clear by then that at the, 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 that the study needed to be extended in a geographic and a, a thematic way in order to gain a general vision of this phenomenon, which is uh, to some extent popular. And um, it has the potential to reshape our um, knowledge of the Hellenistic um, art. So uh, finally, the Marie Curie Global Fellowship arrived and now one of its main goals is the, um, uh, to shape into a monograph the results of this research. And so the first vol volume on uh, continental Greece and islands is well underway, benefiting from a very long pre-project phase. <laughs> The core of the research is the idea of uh, arts on the move. And um, um, in, and in the in the in the Iketnung performance, in the occasion of the performance. But the expression poeti vaganti, which we commonly use now to indicate these itinerant professionals, I find that maybe it only partially captures the uh, sense of the artistic travel, because the sources indicate instead um, deliberate ether rather than a wandering journey throughout the Hellenistic centers. In uh, light of this point, two spheres possibly interacting together result as the composing parts of this study. Travels, for extra agonistic performances and the large scale movements towards the artistic context. The performances uh, um, um, are uh, to be investigated uh, through this um, twofold uh, um, separation. And, and, and the focal questions that this study asks are broken down further into thematic platforms tracing the connections between the performative and itinerant pattern, patterns and fall under two broad topics embracing the transversal and the interdisciplinary nature of the project, the space of the Hellenistic world and the narrative of the arts on the move. The digital humanities have so far offered a significant support at defining the key approach of this research, setting the digital presence of the project, which is another main goal of this Marie Curie project. Um, in collaboration with the IT staff uh, uh, coordinated by Lenny of the CHS has allowed me to 
envisage the core of the structure through mapping the data thematically, geographically, and chronologically organized into the virtual space and through defining the th theoretical framework that you can see here, describing the crucial cornerstones of the project, travel, travelers, and performance. The most re relevant feature of this cultural phenomenon in is its uh, transversality because of the connection, both to the public sphere and uh, also to the diplomatic sphere sometimes. In fact, the inscriptions can attest to artists traveling for public committed commitment on behalf of their birthplace or host city. Um, and so artistic and, and public life sometimes overlap. Another center point of this scenario is the performance to be considered by form and content. In fact, there are different information that we can gather from the inscription for inscriptions. For example, the, um, um, the main typologies of the performances of uh, the individual demonstrations, which are um, um, acroases, epidexes, apologismoi, anagnoses, and then we can gather also the topic of the performance in the inscription, for example, history, tradition, local cultural heritage, uh, supposed to impress the occasional public and gain the, to the performer approval to by the host city. So um, even though we don't have um, the, 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 the works and the, what they produced, artist, art, artistically produced, we can gather some valuable um, uh, hints to track down the movements of these uh, virtuosi and also to reconstruct their works. Um, performances, for, for example, can be uh, engaged in uh, teaching commitment and in uh, reperformance of ancient dramas, for example. Um, the agones then are further crucial tessere of this cultural mosaic. Itinerant artists used to the, the competition as a shortcut to fame or also to um, establish further their uh, reputation. This interference between the two spheres of extra agonistic performances and contests need to be taken into account, but also, mm, let me say, disarmed as uh, Yes, transversality is the key of this research, but the risk here is that it spins out of end. Uh, so the field needs to be well framed and defined uh, what it is useful and constructive according to the specificity of the area. Um, so today I am going to invite you on um, Maritime journey. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, I have here another slide uh, showing the digital presence. If Lenny agrees, we can go through it maybe at the end of the talk so that uh, we can explain better what we are doing. Um, so today I am going to invite you on a maritime journey aim to focus uh, on the artistic landscape of the Aegean, whose roots were attended by um, professionals of the music and the literature in agonistic and extra agonistic performances. If we take a look at the evidence from the Aegean area collected on a quantity base, we can gain some valuable data. We notice that Samos and Kos were uh, ergasterio, forges of uh, artists, especially between the third and mid first centuries BC. Yeah. As for, performance, for performers traveling to the Aegean islands, you can see that Delos outclasses all the others. Then we have uh, um, Kos and Crete, but with a relevant deviation in evidence. Um, furthermore, 
taking into consideration the two principal as ergasterioi providing artists and uh, highlighting their profiles and know-how, which are Kos and Samos. We can infer that the school of course has quite a consistency in the distribution of specialties. While in Samos, we uh, see that the uh, professionals of the Aulos are predominant. They, of course, revolve around the koinon of the Ionian and Elespont technique of the Ionisos, based in um, whose major guild was based in Teos. It is worth mentioning that, for example, Delos and Crete sent few artists abroad. So um, we don't know if they were um, stables, art, artist stables, but it doesn't appear so from the epigraphic evidence. Um, and excluding Delos, that we, we will see in a while um, it as a per se profile. I could take into consideration costs and create by quantity of evidence in order to show the differences existing from place to place. While in cost, the range of specialties is limited and uh, performances mainly revolve, uh, revolve around the uh, Salpistes and the Carux this uh, professionalism. In Crete, professionalism shows a great variety as well uh, as some novelties that we will see uh, later. And there is not quite a real artistic prevalence in specialties and in provenance of artists. For Kos instead, we see, we, de we detect a sort of coherence as um, the local artists prevail on the foreigners, mo mostly coming from the Asia Minor, and um, perform mainly at the beginning of the second century BC in the Asclepieia contests. Charts, though, do not exhaustively speak by themselves, of course, as data need to be interpreted from the particular to the general and vice versa, considering all uh, specificities in the area and, and hooking them to the theoretical pattern set for the, the research. In fact, what results for Delos can be somehow misleading as uh, data record that uh, there was a great turnout of artists in the island, but we have to dig deeper to acknowledge that uh, in the Delian Kermes for the God, allegedly Apollo, um, which are recorded at the bottom, bottom of the tabulae archontum uh, from the beginning of the third to the um, uh, mid second century BC, the majority of the artists are not provided an ethnic. So we need to speculate further in order to gain some clues for their provenance and possible affiliation to the major guilds acting the, in the artistic panorama of the Hellenism. So charts here do not help at all. Um, so as we can see um, in, the, in, in the charts, Delos domi dominates the Aegean and over the, um, and, and, and it outclasses also the other Cyclades in many ways. And um, so the epigraphic panorama of the poeti vaganti for the Aegean is, uh, is Delos. Um, we have a composite yet rich material to refer to in composing a thorough vision of the Hellenistic arts. Uh, epigraphy witnesses uh, the main factors influencing the history of and, and the artistic veins of, of, the, of, of the island. It's sacred uh, nature and the long manus of the Athenians, the social, economic, architectural, and um, also cultural structure of Delos focused altogether on the, on the sanctuary of Apollo. This particular identity placed Delos at the heart of ancient travel routes, but also exposed it to danger over times. 
in particular the Athenian influence enhanced by the religious imprint of the domination strongly conditioned the Hellenistic history of the island that after a long period of independence came, came back under the Athenian flag in the second quarter of the second century BC. The documentation on the Poetivaganti and the situation of Delos of independence before and of subjection then see eye to eye. A quite intense reception of artists supports us in our attempt of uh, reconstruction. The plethora of proxeny decrees uh, and honorary decrees of the period of the independence uh, includes um, about 30 inscriptions praising artists and intellectuals for their service to the Delians and to the sanctuary and for their extra agonistic performances. During the third century BC, Delos bestows honors and privileges on well-known professionals, also for public activities. We, uh, um, among them, among them can count Praxifanes from Mytilene or the historiographer Remnesi Ptolemus from Kime, uh, uh, both awarded high honors. Uh, for, for reasons that we, we don't exactly know. Whether the turnout of the intellectuals and artists offering their civil services to Delos was quite conspicuous during this time, so it was the presence of performers showing off. Um, we can gather uh, many elements uh, to approach to uh, our reconstruction of the artistic life in Delos in this period. And so from inscriptions, as um, we uh, mentioned before, we can gather the typology of uh, performances, the form and content of them, the occasion, the places, and also some other clues that help us, support us in our reconstruction. To this evidence um, that I presented, I am presenting here, we have to add also the um, um, compositions engraved on the stone, as for example, the hymn for the Egyptian uh, gods uh, written by um, an, 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 an unknown poet, uh, Maistas, and the epigrams that uh, Antipatros from C and uh, Antisthenes of Paphos brought uh, respectively for the offerings to the sanctuary by Philostratos, a rich businessman, and um, to celebrate Simalos, a key member at the Ptolemaic court. So we have some works that are engraved on stone um, uh, beside the inscriptions attesting to uh, performative life of other ports on the island. Then, uh, besides the evidence attesting to the extra agonistic performances, we have um, the Delian festivals, of course, the Apollonia and the Dionysia, which were uh, dedicated to the Koroi of uh, local citizens mostly. Uh, but uh, the tabula contum, as I mentioned before, uh, have um, um, an important uh, record of um, kermes for the god, uh, which are recorded um, with the formulas oide epidexanto toteo, oide toteo egonisanto. There is a shift in the formula because they are recorded um, until uh, 259 like this, and then mm, uh, the sources seem to uh, shift to the agones. Um, without going too deep into the matter, uh, as the formula opening um, 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 is uh, somehow confusing. We can see that um, the, this, this, these performances uh, shifted from display situations towards uh, proper competitions and um, 
we can be uh, rather um, um, acknowledged of this because uh, we have uh, in the um, records of the expenses uh, the um, uh, record of the Niketeria for um, artists participating to these kermesses in this period. So um, maybe uh, they uh, were, were contests, real contact, contests afterwards. Um, the large amount of data allows us to see an evolution in uh, these occasions. Um, my studies thus far are, um, um, have, have confirmed that um, the um, epidemic says TOTO um, have a participation of um, uh, artists who also attended a sort of um, uh, segment of uh, an artistic circuit um, which was uh, um, composed by um, the Soteria of Delphi and the Lenaia uh, in Athens. So, in the third century BC, uh, other than in Delos, uh, several artists attended this route. And uh, not only the Epidexes Toteo uh, attest to this, because also other inscriptions um, um, give us uh, further clues about it. Um, so we, we can infer, it, it is interesting that in this period um, of the epidexes, um, the majority of the uh, records do not specify the ethnic of the recorded artists. And it is interesting that no Athenian artists appear in the, in the um, kermesses when they shifted to the Agones, while a large percentage of Athenians, as you can see, uh, participated in the epidexes. So it, we can infer that it was just so, or under the simple recording without any ethnic, we have a guild involved in the organization of the kermesse uh, because the Athenians disappear from them. Another interesting feature of these kermesses is that there is not a rule in the program and the specialties um, performing. So um, um, this, this picture of professionalism is, is more composite in the Agone space where we find unconventional professionals like the um, uh, Taumatopoioi, the Neurospa the Roma Estes, the Orchestai, um, which are um, uh, specialties that we don't uh, find very often in uh, contests. And uh, so Delos is uh, um, draws um, per se scenario in this. Um, also, um, um, there is a shift in uh, magnific magnificence of the program, depending on the editions, because we have sometimes editions um, um, consisting of uh, uh, six or seven performers and others very rich uh, kermesses for the god. So this might su suggest the presence of some delegations of the major guilds coming on the island and taking part to these kermesses. Um, as um, we, um, we have other um, uh, clues, other, other documents that can allow us to um, infer that there were guilds involved in the participation and in the organization in the Kermes for the Gods, um, but um, uh, maybe we will uh, face this discourse in another occasion. Um, 
so we also noticed from this data that uh, there was a preference for the Koroi uh, in the performances uh, uh, for the god. The performances in ensemble um, of the Auletai, but also uh, of other specialties were um, um, very relevant uh, on the island of Delos. And, um, this seems to be a pattern uh, for the Epideixis and also for the Agonestodeo. And um, also um, we can find um, a match um, uh, between the uh, testimony of uh, Semo, Semo from Delos, who in the Deliaca um, attests that uh, in Delos there were contests of Sionaulia. Uh, and the Sionaulia uh, was um, consisted in an Auletes uh, performing with um, other um, um, uh, instruments, other uh, Auloi or other in instruments, uh, maybe wind instruments, but it was um, um, th there was no no voice. Uh, it was all of only a performance for instruments. So in this koroi of the auletai, which are also um, um, underposed to um, payments to the mistos in the uh, record of the expenses, uh, maybe we can read the uh, siunaulia that uh, Semos of Delos attests. Um, in the former slides, we noticed that Crete also was represented in uh, our charts, um, even though uh, not with the numbers that we would expect for quantity of data. Um, while in Delos we are allowed to draw a very rich and nuanced panorama that can be tied up to territorial history, um, and uh, formal trends, even formal trends, we have the impression that the epigraphic evidence for Crete is only capable to gain a partial vision. Um, uh, it is still interesting though, because we have uh, um, unconventional professionals also here in Crete, like the Romaistes, maybe it's the same performer that we find, whom, whom we find in Delos. Um, um, and uh, we have uh, um, the Moscologos, who uh, is a mime. And um, also there is a Newton Orchestes. Um, so uh, another dancer. Um, Delos and Crete often offer, offer two different pictures of the poetic Vaganti phenomenon, but they are valuable in different ways. And um, um, we, we can see some affinity between them because in Delos and in Crete both, there were unconventional specialties making their appearance uh, in the second and the first centuries BC and the Romaistes in particular and also the orchestai are a common pirouge for both the islands. And then we have a document that um, um, again, joins together both these islands, allowing us to take a snack peek of how popular culture and entertainment happened um, and of the deeper meanings it carried. So we are going through the honorary decree for uh, Dioscurides from Tarsus. I'm sorry. Um, in the last years of the second century BC, uh, the Grammaticos uh, from Tarsus Dioscurides was rewarded great honors and privileges of, from, by the cities of Knossos for composing an encomium on the Knossian ethnos and uh, for his poetic works, recited in form of acroases and delivered in written form to the cosmoi of Knossos by his uh, student uh, and poet himself, uh, Murinos from Ansos. 
we are allowed to contextualize Dioscorides professional figure through Strabo description of uh, Tarso uh, cultural and educational life because in the 14th book of uh, Strabo the men of Tarsus um, are described as zealously committed to philosophy and education in general so that Tarsus ended up at eclipsing Athens Alexandria and the other places where Ocium were was favored. Uh, Strabo also writes that Tarsus had his own way, um, different from other cities, to manage the Pides Politon education, as there only citizens used to attend scholai and the atribai, while foreigners not often dwelt there. Then they went abroad to complete their studies and did not frequently come back. In the other city, it was exactly the opposite. So Tarsus was also known for the schools of rhetoric and its citizens were very extremely wealthy people. And then Strabo goes through um, the renowned philosophers and uh, the grammatical, uh, Artemidorus and Diodorus and um, the po and then the poets of Tarsus. So in this descriptions that in this description that Strabo gives us about this city, although referred to a later period, we grasp useful data to frame the professional figure of Dioscurides, an intellectual benefiting from two citizenships, Tarsus and Knossos, as we'll, we'll see, and the consideration reserved to Grammaticoi in his own town. The um, Dioscurides Psephisma was approved by the city of Knossos in its uh, copy, and its copy was placed um, in Delos, where the stone was actually found at the south, at the south of um, the Temple of Apollo. Lines uh, 117 um, give, uh, are the section of the actions carried out by the grammaticos, which are described by, with abundance of details that gained him the honors, um, starting at line 27. And then there, these, these Corridas rewards are introduced by the typical exhortation at line 20 and by the uh, bulliomatic formula. Um, um, so the city proposal starting at line 17 um, was of course approved. And then there are arrangements for the publication of the decree introduced at line 39 by another exhortation. So the text is extremely long and some mistakes uh, and lapses were committed by uh, distracted cutter. And um, we can also notice that in Crete this uh, sometimes happens because, uh, for example, um, uh, in another decree for um, um, Kitarodos, Menecles, uh, there is uh, some mistakes too. So. Uh, it's not a pattern, but it is some, something that we, we can highlight. Um, the part of the inscription dedicated to describe Mur Murino's activity in uh, Knossos has uh, presented some difficulties in interpretation since uh, when the text was published. Um, owing to the obscure construction of the long sentence, generating confusion of actions and actors. Um, so, um, I'm going to translate the first lines. Um, it was resolved by the Cosmoi and the city of Knossos, since Dioscurides a son uh, of Tarsus, son of Dioscurides and Asclepiodorus by adoption, grammaticos, by virtue of his uh, goodwill towards our city, composing an encomium catatum poietan. This is one um, uh, a 
expression that has uh, raised uh, many difficulties and we could uh, translate it as uh, in the manner of or regarding or in accordance to the poet uh, regarding our ethnos saint mirinos of amisos the son of dionysius an epic and lyric lyric poet and um, student and pupil of his to present the works composed by him. For this reason, Murinos, having arrived to us and come before the Cosmoi and the assembly, presented publi publicly uh, through his uh, recitations the industry of the man and the ability in his profession. Equally, now, maybe it is Dioscurides that we are talking about. He showed in writing the goodwill he bears towards the city, renewing the virtue of the ancestors and pursuing, now it is Mirinos who pursues this presentation with as great enthusiasm and zeal as befitted his own teacher. And then, there are the uh, honors and privileges and uh, um, the other rewards. Um, so, um, as we, we, we can see, um, the, it, it, it seems that the lines at 12, 14 have a shift in the in the in the subject of the sentence um, because Dioscurides is alternating with Mirinos as noted for other mistakes uh, um, this is possible because the uh, sentence is confusing um, but um, we, we could say that um, uh, not Mirinos any longer but Dioscurides is the um, autos of line uh, 13. In fact, if Mirinos acroases uh, are balanced with the sense of the actions, the written demonstrations, the egrafo epedexe of the goodwill towards the city through the memory of the ancestors, should more consistently refer to the Oscurides and Comia, probably collected into writing and delivered to the Cosmoi. So Murino's action does not comply poetic initiative here, but his teacher celebration, the apologismos, uh, and this could explain the lack of honors for Murinos. In fact, Murinos uh, only uh, um, receives maybe um, a crown, uh, which is engraved at the bottom of the decree. Instead, uh, Dioscurides uh, has um, uh, many honors, uh, um, uh, like, uh, of course, the praise and uh, um, the um, um, citizenship, uh, which is a kind of big deal, and um, uh, then the inviolability for uh, um, his person and um, um, in war and peace and at sailing uh, into and out of the ports of Knosso um, and um, also with inviolability for his possessions. And then there is uh, the um, um, publication of the decree, uh, which also is quite, big, quite the thing, because a stone was meant to be placed in the sanctuary of Apollo, Delphinio in, Kno in Knossos, and another one in the most visible place picked by the Athenians in the Apollo Temenos in Delos. And then a communication of the resolution with a copy of the inscription was also sent to Tarsus. And we only possess the Delian version. The actions uh, by virtue of which the Oscurides was granted honors and privileges privileges consisted in his literature, an encomium on the ethnos of the Gnosis, uh, Gnosi and other written compositions. The surprising detail here is that Dioscurides acts only as the composer and Murinos uh, is um, the performer here. Um, 
so um, uh, um, maybe maybe um, Murinos does not receive any honor just because of this, because he only delivers uh, um, the thing. Um, uh, even though we maybe can recognize Murinos as a poet attested in the um, uh, Palatine Anthology uh, in the corpus of uh, Philippus from Thessaloniki. Um, among the many matters posed by this inscription, two bigger questions uh, arise. Uh, why the decree was also published in Delos and addressed to the Athenians residing on the island? And why and who can we recognize as the poetess referred in at line five? The, um, two the twofold publication of the decree in the sanctuary of Apollo Delphinion in Knossos and uh, in the most prominent place in the Temenos of Apollo in Delos can be understood through Dioscurides poetry, whose focus consisted in narrating the ancestral connections between the Delian and the Knossian territories. The text does not allow us to speculate if uh, uh, Dioscurides acted out of his own initiative or on a diplomatic necessity. Despite the great rewards bestowed on him, a uh, formal assignment for him is not specified in the decree. So um, we we need, we need to, to um, put this inscription into the context of uh, um, further ep epigraphic um, documents uh, attesting the Cretan presence in Delos at the end of the second century BC. So there was a, a relation between the two islands. And since the first edition of this text, the attention has been addressed on the expression catatum poietan of line five. That was distinctly, distinct, distinctively understood as, as uh, Dioscurides composed in accordance with, with or in the manner of the poet, meaning Homer. Um, there are accurate parallels for the expression as we can see, uh, but, but and and this and also this interpretation lies also on the identification of the Oscurides as the grammaticos mentioned in the in the Suda as um, the author of the uh, periton uh, paromeronomon. Um, so as a grammaticos, the in depth analysis of the of the uh, poets and of the study of tradition, first of all, Homer was the specific object of his teaching. How this matches together with the encomium on the Cretan ethnos and specifically on Knossos raises some reservation though. If we get a closer look to the text, we notice that the encomium is mentioned with a singular form, line four, five, while the composition ta pe pragmateumena are in various points indicated with a plural form. In line 7, 8, 17, 18, 29, this discrepancy, this mismatch could be the hint that the encomium is a broad word here for the various artistic products recited by Mirinos and delivered to Gnosis on his teacher account. The cataton poietan could not refer to the genre, but to the narrative content gravitating around the poetic celebration of the prognoi and uh, the ethnos of the Knossi. The fact of a copy being erected in Delos and the Apollinian Firouge recurring for both the publications in Delos and Knossos could record the Carian pirates expelled by Minos or also the tale of Theseus on the way back from the labyrinth dwelling in Delos and there establishing the festival of Apollo. This theme gravitating around Minos would have allowed the Oscurides to include also Athens in the celebration of Delos and Crete. And this will fit perfectly to the second Athenian domination on the isle. But there is more. 
we can go a little more forward thanks to Plato, opening an insight on Cretan poetic costumes and diverting us away from Homer as the poetess of our, our inscription. Because the quotation of a Homeric verse on the uncivilized way Cyclops used to live reveals the lack of familiarity with Homer of the Cretan Clinians. He in fact states that Homer was not well known by the Cretans since they are not used to indulge at frequenting foreign poets. By virtue of this testimony, we stand by the fact that the Cretans barely and partially acknowledged Homer as a poetess, let alone as the poetess. So being Homer not easily identifiable in the expression who would work as the poetic mo model in the eyes of Dioscurides. Admittedly, this might be Epimendes from Knossos, who the Cretan considered um, as a divinity, uh, and whose works, both in prose and in poetry, narrated the stories unraveling around Minos might. In particular, in the Cretica, Epimenides drew the Cretan version of Arianna, seduction uh, by Dionysos, who once arrived to Minos, gave her the crown, then undergoing the catasterismos, and the crown light at Theseus to find his way in the labyrinth. In Eratosthenes, this part of the might is described referring to the one who wrote the Critica. We have not the Epimenides name, but we are allowed to refer to another passage of the Catasterismo where the author is uh, clarified. This is the uh, version narrated by Epimenides of the seduction happening in Crete. Then there is an insert about Hephaestus, okay, and then uh, again Epimenides version um, opens a perspective that is Crete-centered, since the liaison between the god and Arianna takes place at Minoses, not in Naxos, and refers to the crown only as an instrument for this for, for seducement. The mythical version uh, referred to here at the end of the passage is the hieresis, the abduction com accomplished by the god. And this tale clicks with the mythical segment of Theseus leaving Arianna out um, of the god's will or because the god came to ki kidnap her. Here then follows the Delian tale of Theseus going back home from the labyrinth ventures, stopping by Delos and establishing Apollo's festival. So through this might, we have a triple bond, Knossos, Delos, Athens being connected together through Epimenides' mythical version. We cannot forget to conclude this discourse that a strong relationship between Athens and, and the Knossos is also attested in uh, um, Epimenides' life as he eradicated a plague in Athens and then established an alliance of and friendship between this territory. So in this little journey uh, throughout the Hellenistic arts, we had a sneak peek of a bigger picture. From small to big, we try to exemplify how we can investigate by quantity and quality of the data at our disposal. And um, we saw different levels and nuances of a composite scenario whose investigation can noteworthy improve our understanding of the popular literature and entertainment of the Hellenistic period. So the intention here was to offer an insight of this research, which transversally crosses various fields. Uh, reconstruction of this phenomenon that captures multiple glimpses of history, performative arts, culture, and society um, of the Hellenistic period urges to, bro to, to be brought to, to, comple to completion. And this is the goal of this Marie Curie Fellowship. Profiting from the digital humanities, and um, as it has the potential to provide a reassessment of the ongoing discourse of the cultural production of the Hellenistic period. <laughs>